Welcome adventurers to RuneScape's newest celestial challenge, the Moons of Peril. This guide will cover everything you need to know about facing the three unique demi-bosses within the hidden prison of Nepotsli in Varlamar. Let's get started. First off, you'll need to have completed the Children of the Sun, Twilight's Promise, and have at least started the Perilous Moon's quest, since these bosses reside in Varlamore. I'd recommend 70 plus in your melee combat stats and prayer. Although not absolutely necessary, having at least 20 Hunter, 30 Cooking, and 38 Herb Lore to catch and cook moss lizards and brew potions within the boss area can prove very beneficial and help save on supplies. When you enter the antechamber, head to the northeast corner, which will lead you to the stream-bound cavern. This is where you'll start your runs. A run will begin with prepping food and potions in the stream-bound cavern camp, if you need them, before taking on the eclipse moon. After each moon is killed, it will place you near the entrance to the next one. For example, when you kill the eclipse moon, you'll be placed in the earthbound cavern, where you can catch moss lizards for more food or head right into the blue moon fight. A run ends with the treasure room and leads directly out to the streambound cavern to repeat. Now these bosses hit through protection prayers and as such, defensive armor proves quite valuable in the boss fights. Needless to say, Torva is going to be your best in slot, so use that if you have it. For the rest of us, bringing Justiciar or Barrow's armor will do just fine to help negate most of the damage. You should still bring your best strength boosting gloves, amulet, and boots, like a Torture, Fury, or Primordials if you have them. For your special attack weapons, bring a Crystal Halberd and Dragon Claws. If you don't have these, then you can absolutely get away with just a Dragon Dagger. It still works great here. Now the weapons are the most important part. You'll be using melee during all three boss battles, and each boss is weak to either Crush, Slash, or Stab so you will need a melee weapon for all three different styles. Your best in slot for Slash is going to be the Scythe, and let me just say it rips through the Blood Moon. If you don't have a Scythe, a Salad Blade or Tentacle Whip will do just fine. For Crush, the Scythe is once again best in slot when on the Crush setting, but the new Duel, and I'm gonna absolutely butcher this, Macahoodle, and feel free to roast me in the comments, honestly. Absolutely slap here. Uh, the Inquisitor's Mace and the Abyssal Bludgeon also work very well for the Blue Moon. Uh, finally, for Stab, your best in slot is going to be the Grazi Rapier, followed by the Scythe again on Slash, and then the Zamorakian Hasta. I personally have been running a Dragon Hunter Lance and have seen a ton of other people using the Fang as a stab weapon as well. Uh, honestly, any weapon you choose here should get the job done. These are just your best options. Finally, it's worth noting that defense is important here, and as such, the Dragon Fire Shield is making a comeback, and for once, it's worth using over defenders. If you're using a one-handed weapon, consider bringing a Dragon Fire Shield over your Dragon or a Vernic Defender, especially if you don't have additional tanky armor like Justiciar or Torva. Now these bosses are very similar to the Gauntlet in that you don't have to bring your own supplies. By searching the campsites you built during the Perilous Moon's quest, you can make a cup of tea, which will restore all of your run energy, grab fishing hunter or herb lore supplies from the nearby crate, and gather your own food and potions. You may opt to gather one of the two different types of food available, both of which can be found near the campsite. Cooked Moss Lizards will heal you for 33% of your cooking level, whilst Cook Bream heals for 33% of your fishing level. So get to skilling and cook whatever you're hiring, either cooking or fishing. At 99 fishing, fish heal for an insane 33 hit points each, which is awesome. Moss Lizards can be found in the Earthbound Cabin and are caught by using a rope on the trappable rocks east of the campsite. Then you rustle some nearby bushes to scare the lizards into your trap. Now, Rob Bream can be found in the streambound cavern and are caught with a big fishing net at fishing spots east of the campsite. Players can align their net to the stream to actually increase their chance of catching Bream, which is a really cool mechanic. 
Now, one thing to note here is if you have 75 Hunter, you can actually bare hand catch Moonlight Moss in the Streambound Cavern, which will automatically restore your prayer. This can be really beneficial in speeding up runs since you don't have to use any prayer restore potions. And speaking of potions, let's talk about the Moonlight Potion. This thing is awesome as it's a prayer potion, super combat potion, and divine super defense potion all in one. You just need Moonlight Grub Paste and a vial of water from the herb lore supplies at camp. You can pick Moonlight Grubs from grubby saplings and then grind them into a paste with a pestle and mortar. Simply mix the paste with a vial of water to create the potion. The Moon's Apparel remind me a lot of Barrows. You should kill all three for the best chance at unique loot. You can kill them in any order you like. Other players are present in the same fight, but you deal damage to the boss independently of other players in the arena, and each boss feels familiar with a unique twist. Let me explain. Each of the three moons has two special attacks and a set of moons which surround them on the floor. One of the moons will be clearly highlighted, indicating a safe place for your character to stand and attack the boss. Each of the boss's standard attacks hit with three hit splats, which is why defensive armor is so effective here. Every two attacks, the highlighted moon moves clockwise around the circle. At the full moon and new moon, i.e. when the next safe space is either full or empty, the perilous moon will launch one of its two special attacks. These special attacks alternate, so depending on when you enter the arena, you may get one or the other, or you might jump into the arena right as one is actively happening. This is where the similarities between the bosses end. So let's start off with the Eclipse or Yellow Moon. The Eclipse Moon is weak to stab weapons, so get your Saldor Blade or Hasta out. The first special attack will have a Moon Shield appear. The boss will attack with rays of light and the idea is to move alongside the moon shield to avoid the rays of light. The shield will pause at each corner, so if you turn off your run and move at a walking pace, you should avoid just about all the damage here. The special attack is very similar to walking with the shield while Zuck lobs fireballs at you in the inferno, so it's honestly great practice for that. I find that for the second special attack, it's easiest to position your camera directly above your character. The goal here is to match the orientation of the clones and the order in which they appear in order to reflect their attack and do damage back to the boss. Equipping a heavy hitting weapon like a crystal halberd is amazing here because you reflect the damage to the boss with your weapon without any tick loss. So a slow hitting weapon like a crystal halberd becomes ultra fast as you instantly defend against the clone's attacks and reflect that damage immediately back onto the other boss. Alternatively, a weapon that hits twice like Torag's hammers, the new Sulphur Blades, or a Dragon Dagger Special can be used to hit the last HP on the Mimic, and it allows you to exit the special early. So I never thought I'd honestly see the day that Torag's Hammers actually had a use, but it's pretty cool that they have a, a niche here in the Eclipse boss. Okay, let's move on to the Blue Moon. N no, not that Blue Moon. The Blue Moon is weak to crush weapons, so bring out your Inquisitor's Mace or Abyssal Bludgeon for this fight. The first special attack has the Blue Moon freezing your weapon in a block of ice. You need to punch the ice with a special symbol on it to free your weapon. You can get in two attacks before ice crystals appear beneath your player and will do somewhere between 8 and 10 damage if you continue to stand on them. Simply move away to avoid the ice. Now, if you want to flex on other players, you can actually Wooks walk this ice, similar to Vorkath's acid special attack, where you continually click back and forth between the ice and a safe tile to get in the max number of hits and avoid the ice. Just make sure to start the Wooks walk on the right tick, otherwise you'll be off and get hit by the ice every time instead of dodging the ice every time. This is totally unnecessary and you don't have to do this to get through this special attack, but it's just fun if you'd like to practice it. The second special reveals two braziers at each end of the arena and a host of tornadoes that are moving vertically across the arena. Avoid the tornadoes and light each brazier to stop the boss from healing. If you get hit by a tornado, you'll take a small amount of damage and it'll turn off your run, so be careful. Finally, onto the Blood Moon. 
The Blood Moon is weak to slash weapons, so pull out that Scythe and Dragon Claws or a Dragon Dagger. The first special is called Blood Rain. Pools of blood will rain down randomly all across the room, so avoid standing in them and they'll disappear after a few ticks. Avoiding blood pools does small chip damage to the boss, while standing in the blood will actually do the opposite and heal the boss. Not much to it, just avoid them. The Jaguar is where things get really interesting. Jaguars will spawn around the room along with a ring of blood pools around the boss. Move to the Jaguar with the special glyph underneath it and start attacking. As the Jaguar is about to attack, move one tile back where the blood just was to avoid the attack and then click back on the Jaguar to stay in combat. You can heal up to 20 damage from attacking the Jaguars correctly, but getting hit by them can lead to consistent 16s which will additionally heal the boss. This is by far the hardest special attack between all three moons, but do not be intimidated. Give it a few tries and I promise you, you will get the timing down. And this special is actually really great for practicing for phase two Verzik in the Theater of Blood, where you have to do a similar maneuver to avoid being bounced by Verzik's big belly. All right, so now I wanted to go through a full run through showing an example kill with all three bosses. I've got a full set of rune armor here with a dragon longsword and an amulet of glory. Uh, in my inventory, I've got some Torag's hammers, a dragon mace and a dragon dagger. Um, so very, very simple armor here. So this is just to show that it can be done by, by just about everyone when you have the right stats. So going into the eclipse boss, you can see we jumped in right at the tail end of the moon shield special. So we're just gonna go ahead and start attacking the boss, um, making sure that our weapon is on stab. Each time a new glyph appears, we want to make sure that we're standing on it, and that happens after every two boss attacks. So you can see this next glyph over here, it's going to be a full moon, which gonna, means it's going to be the second special attack. In this case, it's going to be the mimic special attack. So we're going to position our camera right on top of our character and make sure that we click to face each one of these mimics in the order in which they attack so that we can reflect damage back to them. This stage is actually super crucial because if you get this down, you can do a massive amount of damage to the boss without having to do anything. Um, so this really, really helps speed up that fight. So here I've actually stopped attacking the boss just because I want to also show an example of the moon shield. I didn't want to kill the boss too quickly. Um, so here you can see we just wait for that shield to start moving and then move alongside it. We're ahead just by a little bit, but by turning our run energy off, we can sync up exactly with the shield. And for the remainder of the special attack, we shouldn't take any damage. <laughs> And that is the Eclipse boss down. So one thing you'll notice about my inventory is I didn't bring any of the Moonlight potions in. Instead, I'm catching these Moonlight Moths barehanded with 75 Hunter to be able to restore my prayer. I would always suggest you make the Moonlight potions because they also act as that super combat. I'm not bringing them here because I didn't wanna come in with a maxed account and be like, well, I'm, I'm maxed and overpotted with super combat, so this is super easy. I wanted to make sure that I was doing this in a way that is more representative of the average player. Um, so you can see here, I'm just capturing some moss lizards, same as the way that I showed earlier in the video. I'm heading over here to cook them. And in this way, I was able to both restore my prayer and get a nice full inventory of food before the next moon fight. So on to the blue moon here, we're going to want to equip our crush weapon. So I'm pulling out that dragon mace and we're jumping right in. So you can see this is exactly the same as the eclipse moon where we just move between these highlighted glyphs and attack until a special attack happens. All right, so this is the tornado special attack. So I'm basically going to run as fast as I can and try to light these tornadoes without taking too much damage. Um, in my experience, I think it's better to tank a tornado and light the brazier um, just to help prevent that healing uh, from happening. It's worth it in my opinion most of the time. Um, you can see I'm clearly not perfect here, but 
Uh, getting those braziers lit quickly is important because it stops the blue moon from healing. You can see now it's healing zero instead of 10. This drastically shortens the length of this fight. All right, so here's one of my favorite parts with the iceberg special attack over here. Um, you can see I'm just kind of wooks walking this. Um, again, you do not have to do this. You can just move out of the way when those ice crystals appear under your feet. You can get two hits on each and every time, but um, I find this fun. It reminds me of Vorkath a little bit. All right, and that is the blue moon taken care of. So now we are on to the blood moon, in my opinion, the most difficult of the three moons. And also we do not get another chance to prep additional food or potions before this fight. So before the blue moon fight is the last chance that you get to, to prepare more food. Uh, that's okay, we have plenty uh, for what we need. And we're just gonna go in here with our dragon dagger and go ahead and dump our specs as early as we can. This is just so our special attack is regenerating throughout the fight, um, rather than just sitting here with full special attack on. We wanna do as much damage to this boss as we can, and you'll see a little bit later on in these clips um, why we wanna do that, because this boss is healing every time he hits us. Since we're only in rune armor, he's hitting us a lot, which means he's healing a lot. Um, and we'll end up getting him down to like one or two HP, and then he heals all the way back up to like 65 HP. Um, I think it's a little bit overtuned if you ask me, but in this case, we got to deal with it. So that was the Reign of Blood special attack. Um, you don't, don't have to do much, just don't stand in the blood pools. Pretty much as simple as that. All right, and now we are on to the Jaguar special attack. So we're going to attack the Jaguar, click back, and then click back right back onto the Jaguar to avoid that blood pool and avoid the Jaguar's attacks. The timing's a little weird. If you don't get it just right, then you're gonna either get hit by the blood or the Jaguar. Uh, but like I said in the video, just try this a couple of times and you'll get it down. Obviously here I'm making some silly mistakes, but um, I promise it's not as hard as it looks. So we get him down to one HP and then he heals all the way back up to, what is it, 66 HP. That is just really unfortunate here. You know, bad luck when he hits you really hard. So like I said before, I think that's a little bit overtuned on Jagex's part, but um, we got to deal with it for now. And that's the rest of the Blood Moon taken care of there. So um, hopefully you guys have learned a lot from these, these, uh, these guides. Well, that's all the information I have for you today. So get out there and take down some moons. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love your feedback to help make my guides better. Thank you all and have a great rest of your day.